So to be quite honest with you, I have absolutely no idea why I'm filming this video, and I really have no idea how to film an intro for this video, and I can feel a shit ton of anxiety as I sit down to start. But what I do know is that I feel a deep desire in my chest, as though I need to film this video and upload it and share it with you all. So that's why I'm here and doing this. What I do know is that I need to start this video with a major trigger warning because I know it's going to deal with some heavy content. So I'm going to have a full list of trigger warnings in the description below. You all should definitely read that before starting to watch this video because I do not want you to watch anything that could put your mental health at risk. Read the trigger warnings before starting this video. With that, I'm just gonna get started talking because that's what I feel I need to do. So, hello, I'm Kav, in case you didn't know that. I really truly hope this is not the first video you're seeing on my channel because if this is the video you're starting with, good luck to you. This video, I guess, could be considered a life update. The title of this video, I think, is going to be something along the lines of Life Two Months After My Attempt, which is referring to my suicide attempt that happened at the beginning of February of 2020. I did film a video about my suicide attempt, which actually is one of the most viewed videos on my YouTube channel now. That was not my intent when I uploaded that, but it's what ended up happening and honestly now looking back on it that's not surprising to me at all because when you title a YouTube video I tried to kill myself that obviously ends up sounding like a clickbaity title so now looking back on it I can definitely see why that's one of my most popular uploads but that was not my intention. I, again, don't fully know why I filmed and uploaded that video, but what I do know is that this channel is essentially like almost a diary of my life. It has so many different significant parts of my life shared on it. I've basically been going through so much of my life journey since the beginning of high school on this and for better or for worse, that is now a piece of my life journey. So I think that's one reason it's on my channel. Another reason is because I do consider myself to some extent an activist and part of that is being a mental health activist in my opinion. Part of what I do is be completely and totally honest on my channel and on my social media and just here in the internet while this is a very difficult and personal thing to some. For me, it was something I felt I had to share because of the fact that I have started this kind of policy of unadulterated and completely unfiltered honesty. Now, obviously that doesn't extend to everyone and that doesn't mean that I believe everyone who has any kind of public platform, no matter how big or how small, has to do that. But that's just kind of the mentality I follow, so that's what I felt I had to do with this too, and that's just kind of what I plan to do going forward. In the book community, I have made some of my best and my closest friends, so sharing this part of my story, even though it is really personal, it almost didn't feel that way because so many of my closest friends are in this community. This community feels like my second home in a lot of ways. So it almost didn't feel like I was sharing it with the entire internet, which really I was. It just felt like I was sharing it with people that I really know. So I wasn't sharing that video for views. I was sharing it because it felt like what I had to do and I was sharing it because in that moment it felt like it would be healing for me and in some ways it was but in the aftermath of a suicide attempt I don't know if anything is truly healing at least in my personal experience I bring up that video because as it is so popular I think no matter how long you've been subscribed to my channel I assume that you know you probably would have seen that video if you have looked through my channel because of how popular it is so you probably know whether or not you've watched the video that it did happen. I'm probably going to be referring to it 
quite a lot in this video because I'm going to be talking about the aftermath of my attempt. I kind of feel like my life is now split into before and after, as in before the attempt and after the attempt. This was my second suicide attempt. My first suicide attempt was in my sophomore year of high school. It was a week before my 15th birthday. But that was a very different experience for me because that attempt was not premeditated while this one was. So that attempt did not feel like this before and after experience. This one feels truly like an attempt. And I thought that one felt like an attempt, but now it doesn't and in a way it does feel life-changing because i now feel like i'm living a life that i wasn't supposed to be living and i have this overarching question of how do you live a life that wasn't supposed to exist i still haven't figured out a way to answer that question i'm currently in a treatment program which i feel very grateful for because so many different people don't have access to that kind of treatment because the healthcare system is fucked up and every system is fucked up and the world is fucked up in so many different ways. So I feel very grateful to have access to treatment and to such good treatment. I've been in treatment since essentially right after my attempt. Basically I was like in the hospital and then I went straight into my treatment program. And now that treatment program is almost coming to an end and I'm scared shitless because I don't know how to exist without it. This has been all I've known in the after. I don't know where to go. And now there are very few options with the entire global situation. I don't want to minimize the effects of this global pandemic because I am definitely not the most affected. I mean, I am young and I am physically healthy and I'm not one of the frontline essential workers, so I am not the most at risk here, so I definitely don't want to minimize the effects of this pandemic in the slightest, but I also think that this pandemic is affecting all people in different ways and it's okay to acknowledge that while also acknowledging the people who are most at risk and understanding that. I think that we can balance both. For me, first of all, there are very few options with what to do with life after this, at least for now. I also don't know what to do with it. I kind of dropped out of school or I took academic leave. I don't really know what I did. I literally don't know what I did. I think I withdrew from my classes. It's kind of all a blurry haze. So I'm not in school right now. And I don't know if I want to go back to school. I don't know if I want to get a job. And I don't have the option to do either right now. But I also don't know what I want to do. So that's kind of the bigger question right now. And I don't know how to make that decision because I didn't want to do either in the before. And so in the after, I don't know how to make the decision to do either. I feel like people are telling me to go back to school. And by people, I don't mean my family, but I feel like people, like the people are telling me to go back to school. And I don't know if that's the right option for me because I've had such terrible experiences in school since I was so young. Even in elementary school, looking back on it, I thought I had good experiences, but looking back on it now, I actually didn't have as good experiences as I thought I did. And middle school was horrible for me and high school was horrible for me. And you know, I know everyone says middle school and high school are not good times, but when I say they were horrible for me, I mean they were truly horrible for me, as in they were a traumatic experience for me. So I don't know if that's the right option for me, but I also don't know about getting a job. You know, being 18 now, <laughs> I have to be an adult. And I felt on some level prepared for that when I was turning 18, and now I'm in the after, and now I feel totally unprepared. And since coming to this treatment program, I've also gotten new diagnoses. I have gotten a bipolar diagnosis. I have bipolar disorder, bipolar 2 to be specific. I have a trauma diagnosis. I have a trauma disorder. And I started getting treatment for my eating disorder, which 
Though I've had that diagnosis for like over a year now, this is the first time I've started getting treatment for it, which is in a sense kind of fucked up. And a lot of people don't even have access to mental health care or healthcare at all, which is extremely fucked up. So that has also been kind of a whirlwind on its own. I feel like I'm kind of a label-oriented person, not in the sense that I label or judge others, but just in the sense of personally, I feel that labels kind of make me feel more at home or that they help me understand myself. Like, finding the label of lesbian or finding the label of non-binary slash genderqueer were very beneficial for me or using the label Indian American helps me. So having these new labels for my mental illnesses has really been a whirlwind because since I was 14, I've had the label of depression and now to find out that bipolar is actually my label feels different. I'm still grappling with that. And when I was coming into this program, I knew that that was a high possibility. I knew that getting the bipolar disorder and the trauma disorder diagnoses were both really high possibilities. But when I actually got the diagnoses, it was different. I thought I was prepared for it, and then I got the diagnoses, and it felt really different. It felt like I was no longer as prepared for it as I thought I was. It kind of just feels like my life is chaos right now. And I think that's something a lot of people resonate with because of the current global situation. But I feel like my life is chaos in a completely separate way. I also feel like I don't know how to exist in life. I feel almost completely out of place. I feel like after a suicide attempt, there's almost this mentality that you're okay. There's this mentality that you survived the attempt, so you survived whatever made you want to attempt, and that you're fine now. <laughs> That's very far from the truth. I feel like there's just this mentality that once you're safe, you're fine. But as I said in the video about my suicide attempt, once you survive a suicide attempt, that doesn't take away all the factors that made you want to kill yourself. I just feel there are so many misconceptions about what it means to live after surviving an attempt. Maybe it does get better, but I always have this fear that if it does get better, there's always the chance of it not being better again. I mean, you can put all your work into recovery, you can spend thousands of dollars, and you can spend all your time and your effort into recovering. And then months or years later, you can end up back in the same place or in an even worse place than you were. And that is one of my greatest fears. I don't want my life to be just recovery. I don't want my life to be just how do I survive. And I feel like that's all these last two months have been. I feel like I already have enough that I'm battling. I had a breakdown earlier this week after the buildup of being misgendered so much in my life. I know that's something I'm gonna have to deal with for my entire life. I'm always gonna have to deal with the question of when and where is it safe to come out. And even after that, I'm gonna have to deal with the patience of letting people learn. And it's not that I am not open to people learning. Of course I am. I'm so appreciative of people who are open-minded and willing to learn. That also doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt each time you get misgendered. It feels like another stab wound in the same place. It feels like opening up the same wound again and again. And I don't know at what point I'm gonna bleed out from that wound. So I already have that to grapple with. I went through a breakup almost right after my attempt. I realized after entering trauma treatment that I'm still actually dealing with some parts of coming to terms with my sexuality, which was probably the biggest 
realization of entering treatment and the hardest realization and I've been overcoming so much guilt about that because so much of the last couple of years on this platform I have been talking about how proud I am of being queer and of being a lesbian and now to realize that maybe I'm not as proud as I thought I was of that part of myself. I feel so guilty, I feel like I've been lying. So there's that I've also been struggling with and you know, there's also always microaggressive racism to deal with and then you deal with the intersections of all those identities. So I have enough to battle against and I know I'm gonna have to grapple with all of that for the rest of my life. And then you add the mental illnesses on top of that. I don't want my life to be just recovery. I don't want my life to just be fighting. I don't want it to be just be fighting battles against ignorant assholes, against demons in my own mind. I don't want it to just be recovering from the people who don't see me and don't respect me. I don't want it to just be recovering from the trauma of my past, to just be recovering from the demons in my own minds. I don't want that to just be my life. I just really felt like I needed to film this video. I have wanted to film so many other videos. Throughout March, I had my Chain of Gold series. That was actually a pre-planned series before my attempt, so that's why I was able to make that series happen in March, and also I deeply love Cassandra Clare. And then I had my four-year booktube anniversary video come out last week. I always do videos during my booktube anniversaries, so that was also a video that I was able to do. And I've had ideas for videos. I had an idea for a video to just rave about my favorite authors, which I thought would be super fun and uplifting during this time. And then I had an idea for a video to talk about how much I loved More Happy Than Not and why it meant so much to me. And then I had a video to discuss my comfort reads because that's the monthly theme for Bookbound Society, which is the book club I co-host, and I'm probably still going to do that one before the end of the month, so probably next week. I've had a couple other video ideas from some of the other suggestions I got from my four-year booktube anniversary video that I didn't actually end up doing that I wanted to film, and I just haven't been able to do them. And I've had the inspiration to film, and I've had the ability to film, and then I don't do it. So I filmed this one because I felt like I needed to. And maybe after getting this one up, I will feel more able to film the other videos and get those up. I don't know, maybe this is what I needed to get out there first. I'm sorry this was not an uplifting positive video, but if you did stick around and watch it, thank you. I really truly do appreciate it, and I really truly do appreciate all of you who have been supporting me in any way, and I really truly do appreciate those of you who have been going above and beyond to support me. I really appreciate those of you who have been messaging me and who have been going out of your way to message me and to send me your love and support. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. I hope you're staying safe right now. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're staying indoors if you have the ability to do so. And if you are working on the front lines in any way, I really truly do appreciate your service. I hope you're taking care of your mental health in the best way possible. And thank you for everything that you all have done to support me in this time. I really truly do appreciate you all from the very bottom of my heart. And I love you. Goodbye.